Morning everyone, hope you're doing okay. Uh, we've got the morning bulletin for the 30th or the 6th. We've got the end of the month, so we have to bear that in mind because the portfolios are going to be closing and hedge funds are going to be closing positions and reopening positions. And they're probably looking at the recent uh, Fed talk as well. And Powell was speaking yesterday, and so was Lagarde, and so was Bailey as well. So there's lots of chop from a central bank perspective. I'm surprised there wasn't actually that much shifting on the sentiment on the FX side of things, but we'll cover that when we get there. Um, so the big picture is we risk off because you know people, the retail guys are still adamant on buying, uh, which I can show you. And uh, the 24 hour difference had shifted, but that can be attributed to the UK 100. They're really short in the FTSE 100. So that's impacting that, just so you know. So they're still long on the US indices, but they're short in the FTSE, <laughs> right? So uh, that's impacting the calculation, but we're still risk off at the big picture. And VIX is above its yearly pivot. Um, yeah, central bank chatter. And we've got a high VIX, and we've got that five and the ten yield yield inversion as well. Uh, nothing really stands out as sell. There's no dark reds, but there are dark greens. So there's the UK 100, which I just mentioned, and you know, you know, the US oil is also a green. Uh, nothing really stands out as sell. There's hardly any reds in the difference from last week, which is a bit bizarre. Uh, currency strength meter, Swiss strengthened, uh, you might have seen the Euro Swiss, it broke parity yesterday. Uh, so there's a Swiss strength, Not maybe not necessarily Euro weakness, but definitely uh, Swiss strength you can see. Uh, we can see Euro weakness on the half an hour, on the hourly, H4, and it's losing the strength on the daily as well. It's about slap bang in the middle on the weekly. So yeah, it's maybe a little bit of Euro weakness and uh, Swiss strength. So uh, Swiss is there and the Euro is here. And you can zoom in on this when you look at the bulletin, you can just change the, you know, do that. So there's the Euro. There's a Swiss, they're actually um, shortened the Swiss and that's why it's over here and that's why that's a buy. However, CAD, uh, this has been over here all week, and what it's done is it's punished the retail guys and it's bullied them. And so we're probably going to see a reversal on CAD because we can see the bubble size. It should be larger for where it is, but price is um, it's performing poorly. Uh, so that's tell us that the you know it could be Thursday, Friday retail payday, and we're going to see that CAD bubble move, and then we're going to see some you know we'll see some fluctuation and change. Something shouldn't really stay down there for too long because retail guys have only got a finite funds and they can't keep getting bullied. And then they, as soon as they get out, then it moves, <laughs> right? So uh, very, very cruel. And maybe likewise with the Kiwi, they might be getting bullied on the Kiwi as well. So we've got to be a bit careful. Uh, pound yen would obviously be tricky because they're both large and they're very close. So there's going to be a lot of chop for pound yen. Um, yeah, that's what I just said. It's hunted retail guys since Monday and it's been relentless as well. So I think it may be maybe a little bit of a reprieve for the retail guys if they hold on. But it looks like they've probably uh, got bullied enough. They're going to exit. <laughs> so uh, look at um, CAD, a uh, potential uh, reversal on some weakness. So look at Euro CAD, look at Dollar CAD. Swiss CAD might be better than the Euro, to be honest with you. You know, the euro is not performing well at all. So, yeah, look at CAD crosses potentially, or you could just sit on your hands because, um, you know, we ended the month, so it's going to be maybe quite tricky. Uh, there's the UK 100, and uh, dollar CAD is actually a buy at the high level. So, if you get the FXCM trading station, you can look at the SSI snapshots. This number gets like uh, more negative, then it's going to be a stronger buy. If we go this way, it's going to be a, uh, a, like a sell, okay? Likewise, the US 30, if that number increases, it's going to be a stronger sell, okay? So this is how you use that. It's very simple. Uh, S&P, so they went long and, uh, you know, uh, they got punished. So that's how, you know, that's what happens. They went long here. You can see those big candles. It doesn't like the fact that retail guys are buying the dips, so price has to come down. So that's that. And uh, US 30, they're really quick to buy the dip. They want to, they want to make easy money. 
and so they think, all right, well, this is looking pretty strong. Uh, this looks pretty good. And uh, they all went long at the same time, which is a bit weird, but that's what they've done. They all went long at the same time, and they, what they've done, they've held on. But they haven't just held on, but they've added long. So you go here, that move there, they actually held, went sideways. They did sell it a bit, but then they went long again, and that, that's where they went long. And so there, uh, the point where they went long is now um, going to be a resistance. You see, and uh, that's that. Uh, gold sentiment is making a sell at a high level. It's a sell because they're sixty-two percent long, so it should be falling. We'll probably see a breach of eighteen hundred, and especially if they continue to buy, and then we'll come down. So um, it's a great example of how powerful this uh, setup is. Uh, the 5 and the 10 are inverted, so you can see that's not right, that's not normal. Uh, they're all very high, uh, but we've got inversion, which is a uh, risk-off indication. And uh, so if that comes up a bit above the 5-year, then we won't have an inversion. So if by some miracle this pumps and the others don't, then we're not going to get an inversion. So, and then we'll have a steepening and that'll be risk-on. So it's, you, want the, you want this line not to be curved, basically, in a nutshell. And it is, you can see, it's definitely curving. Uh, stop loss cluster update. So not much movement, like I said at the very beginning of the video. Uh, it's hardly any movement at all, considering what happened yesterday with all that central bank stuff. Uh, the largest mover was the dollar CAD at 3% towards buy. So it might be, you know, uh, lending itself to the fact that CAD might weaken a little bit. Um, maybe look for the dollar CAD. I mean, at the moment, it wouldn't be a good buy, but, um, you know, sentimentally at a high level and at a dynamic level, it is. So we might see the CAD drift over, I think, and we might see the Kiwi drift over as well, because what's happened that they got bullied and then they got bullied. And so obviously when they get bullied, they have to exit. And uh, they probably encountered a lot of losses as well. It's pretty horrible. And... Um, so AU was the massive stop loss cluster and it got probed, which you would have seen in the technical channel. The stops were raided and so the size is now 4.17. It was over 6% yesterday and the stops were uh, lower down. So uh, they've moved their stops a bit lower just in case they're going to get you know stopped out. But by doing so, it encourages price to come down and get that liquidity. So um, don't forget there's that link use the QuizzyDB code, just click that and then you know it will take you to the direct URL with the QuizzyDB code, promo code inserted, which is pretty cool. Um, that's fine, just talked about that. Also, uh, CAD could be a bit tired after eating so much liquidity. It's a potential scenario that it's raided so many stops. It's like, okay, job done. <laughs> School police have got their lunch money and then we're going to probably punish something else. Perhaps they might punish Euro, we don't know, but it looks like they might have have, have had their fill on CAD. Um, yeah, we had 18 pip loss yesterday. Dollar Sips was triggered as we were going into that ECB forum and uh, that PAL speech as well. So it was kind of bad timing, but we just have to remember to be vigilant about the economic calendar. And if something triggers like this, and we know that PAL speaking, we have to be careful. Um, but you know, the dollar Swiss was a sell, technically and sentimentally, it was a sell. However, it was just uh, not uh, excellent timing when it triggered. But that's just one of those things. It's all uh, automated. It's just not clever enough to understand the economic calendar. Um, so I don't know if I can include that into the algorithm. Um, maybe I can. I'll have to look at it. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's that. It's just the 18 pip loss. It's not too bad. And we're up a lot on the week. So. And there's the uh, technical conditions for our signals. So potentially we might get Euro USD, we might get Pound USD, Dollar Yen, uh, Dollar Swiss, yep. Because it has to be strong by our strong sale, remember. AU, potentially, and EG, potentially. So we've got lots of um, strong sales and strong buys, which is good. And so if the sentiment agrees, then we're going to get the signal. We just have to be careful about entry and then we should be fine. Uh, PCE, um, personal spending, uh, jobless claims, and then we've got Lagarde speech. Uh, so it's going to be quite a busy calendar. 
and uh, we'll see how we go. So just remember to be careful, check your calendar, and when we get the signal, just uh, look at your chart, and then you should be fine. Just get look at the small time frame for entry, and uh, yeah, that's going all right as well. It's going okay. It was a bit choppy yesterday, but I'm going to report back, you know, at the end of the July with this uh, with this system that I'm, I'm working on. I'm testing currently. It's it's going okay. Yesterday was pretty choppy, but we had central bank speech, so that's one of those things. So have a good day and. Um, I put a survey out on the main channel. If you can fill that in for me, that'd be great because I want to improve and make improvements, and I want to, you know, remedy any issues that you've got. If you've got any suggestions for improvement, then let us know. But if you can fill that survey in, that would be fantastic. And I'll speak to you soon.